the Rain Tarbek Revolt, was an uprising in the Westlands in 261 AC. Houses Rain and Tarbek renounced their fealty and rose against their Lannister overlords due to the perceived weakness of the Lord of Castle Rock, Titus Lannister. In the end, the revolt was crushed by Titus's heir, Sir Tywin Lannister. Hello and welcome to the Rain Tarbek Revolt in the History of Westeros by Captain History. This is a special episode, so please enjoy, and tell me if you'd like to see more of this type of content. It's important to note that this video is trying to be short and concise, so please do delve deep into the lore because it is indeed very interesting, and the backdrop to all the characters. I won't be going over that too much, but let's start off with the prelude. There are many factors that led to the Rain Tarbek Rebellion, the weak and ineffective leadership of Lord Titus Lannister being a key one. He was even described by as weak, lazy, or opulent. Also, the early ambitions of Lady Ellen Rain of Castamere was another reason for escalation of the conflict, due to her scheming and vindictiveness. Ellen was an ambitious and ruthless woman, who desired to marry into the rich Lannister family and become Lady of Casterly Rock. Her father, Robert Rain, successfully arranged a betrothal of her to Tywood Lannister, the heir of Lord Gerald Lannister. However, both Ellen's betrothed and father were slain during the Peak Uprising in 233 AC. That's a whole video in itself. Ellen instead married Gerald's second son, Tyon, and became the Lady of Castle Rock in all but name. As Gerald was widowed, Ellen held a splendid court and used her position to support House Rain, including her brothers Roger and Reynard. However, she had a fierce rivalry with Lady Jane Marband, the wife of Gerald's third son, Titus. After Ellen's husband Tion died in the Fourth Blackfire Rebellion, Gerald began to prepare Titus for the rule. Most of the reigns departed Castle Rock for Castamere, but Ellen remained. She was hastily married to the twice widowed Baldwin Tarbeck, Lord of Tarbeck Hall, by Lord Gerald in 239 AC. After Ellen had attempted to seduce Titus, and Titus had confessed this to his wife, Jane, Master Beldon wrote of the ugly rivalry between Ellen and Jane, which the fool Lord Toad called the War of the Wombs. Titus, the third son, became Lord of Castle Rock and Warden of the West in 244 AC. Titus had desired to be loved, and as such was willing to forgive people quickly. Many saw this as a weakness, and as such, many of Titus's bannermen and merchants from Lannisport and Case borrowed from him without paying their debts. My father, Titus Lannister, nearly bankrupted our house with his poor investments, and allowed himself to be mocked openly at court. Through her brothers, Lady Ellen Tarbeck borrowed fold from House Lannister as well, and used it to restore the crumbling Tarbeck Hall. The power of House Lannister grew less, and even beyond the Westlands, people began to realise that Lannisters were no longer to be feared. As such, Titus betrothed his daughter, Jenna, to Emmon Frey, the second son of Lord Walder Frey, in 252 AC, only to please Walder. Upon hearing the announcement, Lord Roger Rain left the hall in anger, while his sister Ellen laughed aloud. Titus' eldest son, Tywin, broke out against the wedding because he thought it an uneven match. Titus later sent Tywin to King's Landing to serve as a royal cupbearer at King Aegon V's court, and another son, Kevin, to Castamere. Lord Titus' eldest three sons left to fight in the War of the Ninepenny Kings in 260 AC. When Tywin returned from the Stepstones with his brothers, the newly knighted Kevin and Tiggett, he took upon himself the task of restoring House Lannister's dominance. Despite Titus' reluctance, Tywin demanded repayment of his father's loans, and all who could not pay were ordered to send hostages to the Rock. Kevin formed a new company of 500 veterans to aid Tywin, while Sir Harris Swift agreed to surrender his daughter Donna into Kevin's custody. Lord Roger Rain laughed when he read Tywin's edicts, and advised his friends and vassals to do nothing. Lord Walder and Tarbeck wanted to convince Titus to rescind Tywin's edicts, but Tywin had him imprisoned when he came to Castle Rock. In return, Ellen Tarbeck seized three Lannisters, two Lannisters of Lannisport as well as Stafford Lannister, whose sister Joanna was betrothed to Tywin, and threatened them harm unless her lord and husband were returned. Titus ignored Tywin's suggestion that Lord Waldron should be sent back to his wife in three pieces, one for every Lannister taken. Titus instead returned Waldron unharmed and forgave the Tarbeck debt to House Lannister.
Sir Tywin Lannister remained determined to defeat the disloyal vassals of House Lannister. In 261 AC, less than a year after the exchange of the captives, Tywin sent ravens to Tarbacol and Castamere, demanding answers for their crimes at Castle Rock. As he had expected, Lord Roger and Sir Reynard Rain, as well as Lord Waldron and Lady Ellen Tarbeck, rose in rebellion, renouncing their fealty to Castle Rock. Without the permission of Lord Titus Lannister, Tywin marched against the upstart vassals with 3,000 men at arms and crossbowmen and 500 knights. According to a semi canon source, the host was joined on the march by troops from the House Marbrand and House Prester, as well as a dozen lesser lords. Notable belligerents of the battle were House Rain and Tarbeck against House Lannister. The strength House Tarbeck, 500,000 knights, House Rain, 2,000 soldiers, and more than 300 men, women, and children. The Lannisters, 500 knights. 3,000 men at arms and 3,000 crossbow men at Tarbeck Hall, later joined by 13,000 men from the Houses Lannister at Castamere. Because the Lannisters marched on Tarbeck Hall so suddenly, Lord Waldron Tarbeck had no time to rally his banners. As such, he met the Lannister host in battle with only his household knights. A short bloody battle ensued in which the Tarbacks were butchered. Lord Waldron's heir, his only surviving son from his first marriage, died on the battle, but Waldron himself was taken alive, as were two of his sons from his second marriage. Though Waldron expected to be ransomed, they were all executed. The heads of Waldron and his sons were impaled on spears and led the march onto Tarbeck Hall. At the hall itself, Lady Ellen expected a long siege. He sent ravens to Castamere asking her brothers Roger and Reynard for help. Tywin, however, had siege engines prepared in less than a day. With these engines, a great boulder was thrown over the walls onto the Tarbeck's hall, bringing the castle down upon Ellen and her son, Tion. All resistance ended and the gates were thrown open. Tywin commanded the castle he put to the torch. For a day and night, the flames burned until nothing was left of Tarbeck Hall, except a blackened, empty shell. Tywin forced Ellen's daughters, Rohana and Ciri, to join the Silent Sisters, but Rohan's three-year-old son disappeared during the fighting. People think that the boy had been thrown down a well by a fellow Lannister soldier. Lord Roger Rain of Castamere arrived with 2,000 hastily gathered men in time to witness the Tarbeck Hall aflame. Most reports claim the Lannisters had three times as many men as the Rains. Roger led his tired men in charge against the Lannister host, taking them by surprise. Nonetheless, the Lannister host recovered and Lord Roger, heavily outnumbered, was forced to flee. Wounded by a crossbow bolt while fleeing from Tywin's counterattack, Roger was carried back to Castamere. Half the Rain men died during the battle. As Lord Roger was varished and weak due to his injury, his younger brother, Sir Reynard Rain, assumed command of the remaining forces. The Rains took refuge at Castamere, their subterranean seat which had developed from gold and silver mines. Knowing the Lannisters had more men, Reynard led all his men down into the mines. Sir Tywin Lannister arrived at Castamere three days after the burning of Tarbeck Hall, and according to some sources, his host had doubled in size with the arrival of forces from his lords, Bainford, Plum, Staxpear, and Westerling. Reynard believed he held the advantage, as Tywin could not possibly fight his way inside the mines. When his people were all inside, Reynard sent terms for surrender to Tywin, stating that the Reigns would be loyal vassals in return for Tywin's brothers serving with Castamere's hostages. Tywin ignored Reynard's terms. Instead, he ordered his force to seal the mine entrances with pick and shovel. All entrances were blocked with tons of stone, earth and soil, so that there was no way in or out. Over the course of another three days, Tywin had his men dam a nearby stream and divert it into the mine entrance. Water easily found its way through the tiny gaps in the rubble that blocked the mouth of the entrance. None of the 300 men, women and children within emerged from the tunnels. Lannister men stationed at the most distant entrances claimed they could hear faint screaming and shouting, but by daybreak there was nothing but silence. Tywin commanded that the castle on the surface be set ablaze. By the end of the campaign, the rebellious houses Rain and Tarbeck were obliterated. The ruined, blackened and crumbling castles of Castamere and Tarbeck Hall stamped empty to this day, as a reminder to those who dared scorn the power of the rock. 
the Casimir's minds have remained sealed since. Tywin's manner of dealing with the revolt had made him respected and feared throughout the Seven Kingdoms. Though the brutality of Tywin's methods drew censure for some, everyone agreed that order had been restored to the Westerlands. Tywin's actions to restore House Lannister power are immortalised in a song The Reigns of Castamere, and he is known to have used the song as a threat against troublesome bannermen. Tywin says it best himself. And how dangerous it can be to taunt a lion. I, Tywin Lannister, led the assault on Castamere to put down this rebellion. I made an example of them to anyone who doubts our might. They even made a quaint song about the fates of the reigns of Castamere. Sadly, there are no reigns left to hear it. Today, the Golden Lion of Lannister is rightly admired and feared throughout the Seven Kingdoms. Our words are, hear me roar. But there are other words that should be remembered when crossing a lion of Casterly Rock. A Lannister always pays his debts.